All right, we're here today with the son of Coffeeville, Dustin Hurlbut. Dustin, how you doing? Doing good. Um, for those of you who don't know about Dustin, Dustin uh, grew up here in Coffeeville, uh, played here at CCC, and then transferred on and uh, was drafted in the 16th round by the Oakland Athletics in 2015, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, take us through uh, the day in the life of a professional athlete. Um, well, during spring training, it's early days, early mornings. Uh, you know, we get up around 5.30, get there around 6, have breakfast. Uh, then until about nine, you're in meetings, and then uh, go warm up, stretch, do your, all your stuff, get on the mound. If you have a side that day, a bullpen, throw your bullpen if you're in the game. You know, you get ready for the game, and, uh, you know, when you're done, do your conditioning and lift, and, you know, then you get out of there. Right. Okay, so, I mean, uh, being a professional athlete, everything's glamorous. You get the flying planes. You get people <laughs> pick up your bags. How accurate is that? Uh, well, it would be accurate if I was in the major leagues. Right. But being in the minor leagues, it's a grind. You know, mm -hmm. the, it's a grind for a reason. Uh, you know, <laughs> you only money you make on the side is your meal money you get, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, you got to carry your own bags. We ride in vans, you know. <laughs> So it's like uh, the JUCO life all over again. It is, especially in rookie ball. It's exactly like the JUCO life. But mm -hmm. when you get up to the full seasons, you know, then you actually get to take a bus. But then you're actually doing the 14, 15 hour bus rides too. Right, right. Yeah. So, but I mean, the bond that you mm -hmm. guys get on those bus rides or van rides, again, translating into the JUCO you know, level, it, the bonds you make are, are priceless. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, those rides are fun too. That's when you get to know your teammates too. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you know, you sit next to them for 14 hours, you learn a lot about somebody. Right. So, uh, yeah, we, you know, we, you know, to pass the time, play card games, you know, all sorts of stuff, uh, you know, build build bonds, relationships, and, you know, that correlates onto the field, too. Right. What, um, so game day, what's your routine game day-wise? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> game day is uh, about an hour before I start. Uh, I start warming up, start stretching. Um do my active warm up, ride the bike for ten minutes. Do ten minutes of stretching. You know, I'll go to the trainer. He'll stretch me out for ten more minutes. You know, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll go out with thirty minutes left before the start. I'll go outside and start my throwing program and stretching program out there. And uh, you know, I'll be out, throw my bullpen before the game. And you know, about five minutes before the game starts, I'll go in the dugout, get a glass of water, and get ready to go. Time for game time. Yeah. Uh, the baseball team. We actually had a, a Texas Rangers scout in the. Uh, in our office uh, talking about a couple of our players and his son as well um, and he was talking about how tough Midland uh, is the pitch but I mean even as tough as it was I mean he posted a 5-5 five, five record uh, three six five ERA in 17 starts but uh, kind of talk to us about the level of, of the Midland yeah um, I guess you could say I was kind of lucky because uh, it is a hitter's park because mm -hmm. the wind's always blown out but it seemed like every time I pitched the wind was blown in mm -hmm. <laughs> so that helped me out there a little bit uh, but yeah, the hitters, I mean, it's a whole new ball game when you get up there. I was in uh, low A and high A, you know, before that, and it uh, seems like the hitters just swing at everything and usually miss at everything. Right. Uh, but you get up there to double A, the guys are, you know, patient. They know the strike zone. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, strike zone, strike zone sink, uh, shrinks a little bit, so that's a problem. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the guys, they're good. You know, when they want their pitch, they get their pitch, they don't miss it. You mm -hmm. know, they hit it. But, uh, you know, also, I got eight guys behind me that, you know, are also great athletes and great baseball players too so they make right. it easy on me nice uh what, what was your most memorable professional game or memory that you're allowed to share without kangaroo court yeah <laughs> um i would say <clears throat> probably when i was in low a last year uh we were in kane county and uh I, it was my first complete game i threw mm -hmm. as a professional pitcher and uh there's a lot of big time guys in the stands i have couple a couple bosses for my coaches were there and the scouts and everything so it was really cool to do really good there and plus I had some family there to watch and that was a lot of fun too what's it like when you have have kid little kids come up after the game wanting your autograph I mean it's almost surreal still uh -huh. you know it's been happening for the last couple of years but I mean they come up and they know you by name they know your number you mm -hmm. know sometimes they have your shirt on with your name on it <laughs> It's a uh, it's a cool feeling to have them come to you and you know look up to you as something they want to be you know right. when they grow up. Right. Well, talking about growing up, uh, you and Zach kind of grew up together yeah. uh, in in, in Coffeeville. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, I mean, you. I'm sure you know stories of him back in the day, huh? Well, see, we grew up playing basketball together, I think, and then you're uh, Dustin's 
a year younger than me and a year older than my younger brother. So you got stuck with Mitchells no matter what you were yeah. up to. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so my apologies to you. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, we grew up playing basketball. I think we played we played soccer together yeah. uh, for Pete Geisel traveling soccer team. Yeah. Shout out to him. And yeah. then um, in high school we played basketball and football together. I think yeah. so. Um, uh, just. Coffee Athletics was different, wasn't it? It was a lot different. It was, uh, it was just show up and get going. Really. <laughs> yeah, it really was. But it, uh, I don't know, just being on the outside, it was really cool. I mean, the town went nuts Facebook wise when you got drafted, mm-hmm. and then uh, your really your success the last uh, recently has been I, I don't know, um, been really and kind of fun to watch, especially coming back home mm-hmm. and being around. Is it weird coming back to Caulfield and just hanging out? Um, kind of because you're, I was, I'm in such a routine throughout the whole year, you know, and I'm always on the go. I'm going, going, going. During the season, I only get like eight days off, you know, play 144 games a year, and you know, you got to do that in a six month period, so <laughs> right. you know, not many days off. So, you know, when I, all that's going on, going on, going on, and then all of a sudden I get here, and it's like time stops. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, so much got, time. Yeah, you know, I get off my routine, you know, get off my schedule, and you know, and I just look around and. I feel like I find myself just standing around looking most of the time. <laughs> You're gonna have your rocker on the on the front porch. Exactly, right now. exactly. Well, I mean, Zach brought it up that you played basketball and and all of sorts of sports. What brought you to CCC? Was it baseball? Was it football? Was it? Uh, well, you know, when I when in high school, I played all the sports, you know, and then uh, I wanted, you know, I wanted to play a sport in college. I didn't know what, uh, mm-hmm. whatever they would, you know, give me a scholarship for. So, you know, my senior year came around and I got no scholarships for baseball or, you know, football or anything like that. So uh, I first uh, wanted to walk on to punt as a punter here for the football team. Mm -hmm. So I did that for the summer. And then, uh, you know, spring came around and I was like, I think I can do this baseball thing. So I had my assistant coach in high school um, get Jake uh, John Martin's number, the head baseball coach back then. And I uh, gave him a call, and he said I'd come out at 9 o'clock the next day and do a little tryout. And I was expecting, you know, five, six, seven, eight guys, you know, and I was the only one there. <laughs> and uh, so I was a little, a little nervous. And, uh, you know, John being the head coach, I told him I was a pitcher, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he put the gear on, and he caught my bullpen right there. So, what? you know, I had to impress him right there. Right? You know, I wasn't, <laughs> right. wouldn't be playing baseball. So he liked what he saw and uh, quit football, and I came to play baseball, gave me, made the team. Uh, you know, gave me a scholarship after that, and then you know, ended up being a starting pitcher, and you know, never looked back. Just right, kept it going. What was your time like here at CCC? I was a lot of fun. That was the first time I was really a part of a team. You mm-hmm. know, and I, I had the most fun I think so far as an adult right. at my junior college. Right. And uh, you know, you build those bonds with those guys that you know last forever. Mm-hmm. And you know, it was a grind. You know, this is not a glamorous college. You know, it's a grind. You know, with, especially with sports, you right. got to you know really enjoy the game and really. Uh, just dig down deep and keep grinding and uh, you know I think that's what what gives me my edge to this day is you know I learned back then you you know you just got to go get it and no mm-hmm. one's going to help you out really it's really up to you if you want to keep your career going and you want to have success you have to do it so right. and that's really what I got from here especially John Martin being the head coach he uh, he's a great coach he uh, you know I might have not known what I had back then but he sure did and he made me <laughs> he, he straightened me up a little bit and probably got me to where I am here today. Well, those Martins, they're, they're very <laughs> regimented. They know what they want, and they're going to make sure that, uh, you know, their players are doing it. And I, and I can say that, you know, because Jake's my head coach now. And um, But, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so you're not biased at all. No, not, not whatsoever. <laughs> you know, uh, but, uh, I mean, when I was on the West Coast, you know, with uh, Pratt, I mean, we, we knew of John and Jake and everything like that and, you know, what they were doing here. So, I mean, piggybacks exactly what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, what was your most memorable game here at CCC? Whether you were pitching or or uh, in the dugout? Oh man, probably. Uh, mm, there was a lot of them. Um, probably the game I pitched in Wichita against uh, Neosho against Neosho. It was it was a grind, and uh, we actually ended up losing the game one to nothing. But uh, I threw a complete game. You know, I gave up about, you know, three or four hits. We had, you know, more hits than they did, but we couldn't score a run. And that was actually the last game of the season. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably the most memorable game I threw. I just, you know, I just felt like I could, you know, right. wasn't going to get beat. We were going to win regardless. And then I think I gave up one run in the first inning and then threw a shutout after that. And Those are always tough. Yeah. Always tough. That's, that was that was the story of my life here, too, when I was <laughs> playing at Coffeville. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So after Coffeville, where'd you go? I uh, got a scholarship at Northeastern State University. Um, 
you know, I was there for about two weeks, and then I started having elbow issues. Mm -hmm. Went and got that looked out, found out I had a torn UCL. So uh, I got Tommy John that year. I redshirted my junior year uh, there at Northeastern. And uh, after that, didn't return to the school, went to Tabor College in Hillsboro, Kansas. and uh, Very good program. Yeah, came mm -hmm. back. Yeah, they actually went to the World Series the year before mm -hmm. and went there and, you know, got healthy and uh, – Mark, the head coach there, he wanted me to be the ace, so he let me. He gave me the ball first game of the season and had a great had a great year. And it, you know that was my draft year, so right. had a great year. We went back to the World Series, fun, mm -hmm. great baseball team, had a lot of fun there, and yeah, it's good good time. What was it like uh, playing for for Mark Staniford, Correct, mm -hmm. Mark Stanford. Uh, what was it like going from John to Mark? Yeah, uh, John is definitely a JUCO coach at uh -huh. the time. Like he was a. You know, there's no rules, so this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna get better. Like he, right. he wanted to get better, so he, 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 <laughs> he got kept better us out there and <laughs> made us get better. Uh, yeah, but Mark, he Stanford, he's a, uh, he's uh, reminds me of a big league coach, laid back. Mm -hmm. You know, knows what we need to do to get our work in that day. He knows what we need to do, and you know, just sits back and lets us, you know, kind of practice, kind of run the practice, you know, and right. and do it ourselves. And I think that's why we were so good because we had so many guys with talent that just went out there and knew that what they had to do so we could win and, mm -hmm. yeah. what um if you could give advice to a kid who, who is from coffeeville you know knows about you wants to be a professional pitcher just like you or a professional athlete what, what advice would you give him as he's growing up yeah just you know never take you know granted of an opportunity always go out and even if you know even if you don't think you can do it you can't you probably can you mm -hmm. know don't ever let anybody tell you, you can't do anything make your own path you know don't follow somebody else's footsteps do your own thing your own way and you'll find success doing that well dustin man i appreciate you know you taking the time to come out here i know that you know the past couple of months that i've gotten to to know you has been beneficial for me as well as the pitching staff here so uh again thank you for your time today mm -hmm. and thank you for uh, giving back to uh, to coffee yeah thanks for having me absolutely man have a good one yep